In this episode, we take a break from our underground house project to show you how to repair your great stuff guns. Now I actually have three guns. One was for spray glue, and the other for spray foam, and then the third was just because one of the guns jammed up and I ended up buying another one to replace it. But eventually they all got jammed and I decided to fix them instead. My channel usually shows progress on my earth sheltered house build, mostly concrete steel and polystyrene. You can check out some of our other videos if that interests you. I just needed these guns fixed so I could do that next step. So how many times have I repaired one of these guns from a serious blockage? Just the once. But now, that is my only gun that works flawlessly, and I need to fix the other two. So let's start by looking at this gun. It has a can of cleaner attached, but it, that won't even come out at all. And this other gun lets it out very slowly, but much too slowly to actually work with. So two different problems. I fixed them both, but that video I recorded was too long, so I'm just going to show clips from the one fixing here. Note I should probably wear gloves when I use spray foam. It's not even a matter of will it get on you, it's simply a matter of time to find where it got on you. When you store these, you're supposed to turn this dial all the way to the right until the trigger won't pull anymore. In theory this should keep the spray foam sealed and ready to use, but in reality the stuff hardens eventually anyway. And actually if you look, the fine print on the gun packaging says you're supposed to make sure to use your guns for at least a few seconds every 30 days or so to keep them from gumming up. Also, when you store it, always leave it with the can on. Knowing all this and being careful, and my gun still failed eventually. No videos already on YouTube, so let's make this one. The top of the pressure chamber unscrews easily with a 3 quarter inch wrench. But if we did that while it was connected to the spray foam can, we might have a huge mess on our hands. So let's get that can off. The can just unthreads. Whenever you take off a can, it spills a little bit of spray foam, so you need to have some cleaner ready to clear that up right away before it sets and blocks either the gun or the can. Don't take off a can, even an empty one, if you don't have cleaner handy. We'll let that cleaner soak into the gun a bit, and we'll quickly save the can too. Normally I would say you should never take off a can unless you're ready to toss it out and replace it with a new one. And actually that's why I have two guns. To avoid switching back and forth between the spray foam and the spray glue. That white thing in the top of the can gets pressed when it attaches to the gun and that lets some foam flow around it. It needs to be clean all the way around for max flow rate. So we'll just leave some cleaner sitting in the top of that also. I can clean a bit of the crud out from the outside. I can even push the ball out of the way a little and oh, there comes some foam comes out the top. So now I have to clean that out before it sets. But zooming in on the valve and you can see the little white ball looks pretty clean. And because we just pushed it, we know it can move in and out. If the valve is fine, then we need to get into this pressure chamber area and look for the blockage. And if we have to get in there, you know things are pretty serious. First, let's attach the cleaner can to the top to see if freeing that ball helped at all. Open up the gun again and nope, still very slow flow. If we are going to open up the pressure chamber, we want to run it until all the pressure is gone. So I tied the trigger in the open position with a piece of wire and did something else while it drained out. Eventually we can get the cleaner to come through, but the flow rate is still low. So there must be a partial blockage which renders the gun essentially useless. Let's transfer the cleaner can back to the other gun while we open up gun A. This is the pressure chamber right here. You can see the barrel attaches on this end. And there's also a small nut on this other side. No need to take that off. Pulling the trigger back pulls this assembly which pulls the shaft and opens up the pressure chamber and lets some cleaner out of the barrel. I'll use the 3 quarter inch wrench to open up this top end and take off the valve assembly. Be sure you've let out whatever pressure you can. This piece has the valve in it. You can't even see it because it's so gummed up. However, if you have a small tool or a screw, you can scratch it out. Okay. 
Let's put a little more cleaner in there. I'm just using a piece of wire to clean out this valve. Hopefully you have some nice little precision tools for the job instead, but this works. Maybe you can borrow something from your dentist. Last time I was at the dentist, I was wondering if they use their fancy little tools and UV glue and all that stuff to do small repairs when they go home. I can see the back side of the valve assembly now. Let's fill it up with cleaner and set it aside. You can actually access most of this pressure chamber from the top end, and this one doesn't look too bad, so maybe the obstruction was just in that valve section. When I fixed gun B off camera, this pressure chamber was just cram-packed with a solid lump of dense foam. The only way to get it all out was to take off the barrel. Gun A is in much better shape, and I may have been able to sort it all out from this open end, but since I want to show you how to open up the barrel, I'm going to do that anyway. You can see what appears to be somewhere to put a wrench at the base of this barrel. Its size is somewhere between 13 millimeter and half an inch, but not quite either. These joints are tough, so let's put it in a vise to make things easier. The metal is so weak that the wrench can't hold it. I, like I said, I've done this before, so consider this a reenactment. I tried much more with the previous gun. I tried both metric and imperial, and I couldn't get a good fit. The adjustable wrench didn't work either. Then I got desperate and decided to call in the vice grips. I usually only use these when I don't care about destroying whatever I plan to grip. So here, I will try to be as careful as possible, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And the tool is garbage if I can't get this thing off anyway. Clamp them on, and then lefty loosey. Tighten those clamps even tighter and try again. This is not easy and I don't want to crush the tube. And finally, some movement with just a little bit of crushing. I'm emboldened by the signs of weakness, so I'll keep going until it's off. This long plunger is what is really opening up the end of the chamber when you pull the trigger back. Clean off a little bit of crud from the end of it. And as for the pressure chamber itself, this one isn't too bad, but like I said, my previous one was packed solid, so I used a drill with a small drill bit to drill in there a bunch and break it up. Then we pull out most of the crud with any small tools you happen to have laying around. And then I blow out the smaller chunks with the air gun. Being careful not to blow away whatever little small pieces you have laying around. Let's check the barrel. It already looks pretty clean. It might, like I said, in my previous one, this was packed as well, and I had to drill this out too. So, a little more gun cleaner, and we can put it all back together. Again, I use the thread tape. Again, probably not necessary. And then I thread the gun onto the barrel. Make sure it goes on tight. I was a bit too careful with the last one, and I needed to come back and tighten it some more because there was a little bit of leakage. Then
that vice grip really mashed things up and I wouldn't want to get scratched by that rough metal. So let's pacify and beautify with a little bit of electrical tape. Next, let's check out that valve assembly while we have this all open. If you get a flat end screwdriver and put it in here, you can actually unscrew the valve assembly and look at all the individual pieces. Don't lose any. You should find a spring and a ball behind that threaded end cap. In this case, there's a bunch of hardened foam jamming up the spring, and we need to clear that out. You can imagine that the spring can't compress, the ball can't move fully open, and the spray foam can only squeeze through slowly. This might have been our problem all along. Let's get this all cleaned up. Time to put it back together, ball first, and then the spring on the threaded piece, and we tighten that all in. and then put this assembly back on the gun. Again, a little thread tape, and we tighten that on there. And then let's put the cam back on. The sound is busted in my GoPro, so that's why there's no audio in this. But there was a nice air pressure sound as that pressure chamber filled up when I threaded this on. And pull the trigger a little and a lot. Oh, all good now. For this other gun, the ball was really stuck in that spring check valve, and I had to put all my weight onto the tip of a machine screw to get it out. Over 10,000 PSI. That worked, and you can see the little white ball. It's still attached to the little glue plug that totally blocked that other gun. Next week, we'll get back to our usual but unusual construction progress videos.